Hey guys, today we're going to go over how to use a multimeter for beginners. Anytime you're wanting to fix something electrical, whether it's in your house, in your shop, in your garage, a uh, multimeter is going to be your best friend. Now this is a beginner course, so we're not going to be covering all the functions of a multimeter today. However, we will cover the most basic types of testing. So the first thing you're normally going to use is going to be voltage. So this symbol right here, the V, is, is your voltage testing. So before you do your voltage test, you're going to want to make sure that your leads are in the, in the correct holes. So we'll take these out here and show you. The black hole on the bottom is always going to be your common. Your common is your black lead. It's kind of like your neutral in a circuit. For most of your testing, including the test we're going to go over today, this spot right here is going to be where your red lead goes. It's to cover voltage, resistance, continuity, capacitance, diode test, frequency, and temperature. Also duty cycle. But not, what we're going to cover today is voltage, resistance, and continuity. So to start out with, we're going to set our multimeter up for voltage testing. So we put our black lead in the common, and we put our red lead over here where the V is at. Then we can turn our multimeter on. Now, with this particular multimeter, you'll see that it says auto, and that means that this is auto ranging. So it'll automatically sense the voltage or the, the value of the voltage and adjust itself to the correct range to get an accurate reading. It'll go from millivolts all the way up to volts. So you can also, with this particular meter, you can hold this button and the screen will light up. It's great for uh, testing in low lit areas. Now you've got two types of voltage. You've got DC and AC. DC current is going to be the solid line with the dots below it. To change on this multimeter you hit select and now it's trying to read DC voltage. You hit select again, and you go to AC voltage. Now, before you do any kind of voltage testing, you're going to want to make sure that your meter is rated to check the voltage that you're wanting to measure. Now, most household voltage in the United States is going to be 120 AC. So you can look here, and this is category 4, 600, which is very good and it's category 3 1000 the categories from lowest to highest the highest is better so category 4 is better than category 3 category 3 is better than category 2 but you want to make sure that the meter you're using is rated for at least the voltage you're testing if it's not you could result in an, in an explosion now we'll leave the table here and go over to a receptacle and I'll show you how to measure voltage on an AC current. So here we are at our receptacle. Now as you may notice on a receptacle you have three different holes. You've got a smaller rectangular hole which would be this one. You've got a larger rectangular hole which is this one and then you've got this circular hole and the way these are set up is your smaller rectangular hole is for your incoming power that'll be your hot wire now the small the bigger rectangular hole will be your neutral or the other end of your circuit going back to the panel 
and the circular hole will be your ground. Your ground is mostly for your protection. So your circuit actually carries from the hot to the neutral. And before you do any voltage testing or any kind of testing, you want to use a non-contact voltage detector and one that you really trust. I replace these very often, at least every six months. And to use this, you simply turn the power on and insert it into the hot side of the receptacle. And you'll notice it flashes and it beeps. When you take it out, it stops and turns green, and it flashes and beeps. This means that there is voltage in that receptacle. Now we're going to get to our measurement. So we're going to come down here to our multimeter, which is set on AC current. You can see the wave there, that's AC current. And a general safety practice when testing a receptacle is you always want to insert your black lead into the neutral hole first. This ensures that there is no risk of electrical shock. Now we're going to insert our red lead into the hole that the hot wire is in. And as you can see on our multimeter, we're reading 119 volts AC. That's a good reading. Your reading should be anywhere between 117 and 125 volts, depending on your location in the United States. Now, whenever you remove your test leads, you want to remove the red first. This de-energizes your testing leads. When you remove that, as you can see here on our multimeter, the voltage drops to very, very near zero. Now you can remove your black safely. However, if you remove the black first, you are still in the hot side of the receptacle, and that hot voltage or live voltage is passing through the multimeter from the red lead to the black lead. That's how it does its test. So if you take this black lead out first, that metal conductor on the end of it has power on it. So always, always, always take the red lead out first. Now we'll go back to our table and I'll show you how to do continuity. Okay, now it's time for our continuity test. The continuity function of this meter is the symbol that looks kind of like a Wi-Fi symbol. And the way it works is you will get a beep whenever you are in a continuous circuit and you will see a value on the screen. Now for this test, you'll see the same symbol here. So your leads go in the same place they did for a voltage test. So your black is going to go on your common, your red is going to go over here with your voltage, your resistance, and all the rest of the symbols. Now what you can do is turn your multimeter on. I always turn my screen on, makes it easier to see. And you can check your multimeter to make sure that it's working. So you take your test leads and you touch them together. You hear that beep? That means that your meter is working correctly. Now whenever you touch them together, you want a value that's very, very close to zero. And the reason for that is because if it's not very close to zero, then your leads are bad. And mine's bouncing all over the place because I'm trying to use one hand to complete this test. But right there's a pretty good connection. So yeah, you want your value to be very near zero. Now, this is good for checking extension cords, power cords, um, 
anything that you suspect might have a short in it. However, this test you do not want to do on a live circuit because it could result in an explosion. Your multimeter during this test is going to send out a voltage through the wire or device that you're testing and it reads what comes back on the black lead and uses a preset calculation to show you the value on the screen. So since this sends out voltage, you don't want any incoming voltage because they will bump heads together if you if you if I may and cause an explosion. So we're going to use this piece of wire here for an example. Simple piece of wire is short. It's obviously continuous. But for this example, we'll use it. We'll put our red lead there. We'll put our black lead at the opposite end. And you hear the beep. That, that means that that wire is continuous. Now, on an extension cord, you have, just like with the voltage test, you have different size prongs and a different size holes in the plug. You'll have a small rectangular prong and a small rectangular plug and a large rectangular prong and a large rectangular plug. Those two different sizes are separate wires inside that cord. So if you want to check it for a short, all you have to do is place one lead inside the small hole and place one lead on the on the small prong and you should hear this same beep. Now, if you don't hear the beep, it, the beep, then there is a broken wire and that is the wire. It's on the small prong. Now, if you do hear the beep, you want to make sure that your test leads here are in the holes really well. And then you're going to begin wiggling each end of the cord. While you're wiggling it, if this multimeter it beeps and then doesn't beep and then beep and then doesn't beep, you have a short in that wire. And you're going to repeat this for all the prongs and all the holes on the extension cord. Now, I always recommend using a non-contact voltage detector like this one here before you do a continuity test. Now we'll go over resistance. Resistance exists on all circuits. So resistance is kind of like friction. It is the pushback that wire or a device has on electricity. It's the amount it want, it doesn't want it to, to go. So similar to friction, it tries to stop it. And the more resistance you have, the less current can go through that. Now, as you can see with this wire, it's a very short wire, but it will have some resistance. So we'll get this test lead on that end. And we will put this test lead on the other end. And this wire has very little resistance at all. And that's because it's very short. But if you had a very, very long wire, the longer the wire, the more resistance it has. Now, copper has low resistance in its natural state. This is why we use it for wire so often. Aluminum is another conductor that has very little resistance. The best conductor is gold. Gold has the lowest resistance of anything. This is why they use it in microchips and different electronics as a conductor. Now, you have what's called resistors, and you'll find these in a lot of devices, like your control panel on your stove, or your controls on your microwave, or your controls on your window air conditioner. You'll find resistors everywhere. This function is going to be what you want to use to check those resistors. And a resistor has the value on the side in ohms. This little symbol right here is ohms. 
and that is just a unit for resistance similar to how Fahrenheit is for temperature or Celsius is for temperature this is just a, a unit of measure but resistance is what you're measuring so that's the three basic functions you're gonna need um, the continuity test for extent for checking extension cords is awesome um, I highly recommend this particular multimeter it's got very high safety ratings um, it's uh, got a six foot drop which means that it, it's built in a rubber case to withstand a six foot drop um, it also is auto ranging which means that uh, it, it automatically detects where it needs to be so you don't have to go through all the different ranges before you find the one that you're needing to test um, another cool feature of this is it's got what's called true RMS True RMS means that it takes an average of the reading within a millisecond. So let's say you plug your two test leads here in and it picks up 110, then it picks up 130, then it picks up 115. Well, instead of it bouncing all over the place, it takes the average and shows it to you because electricity travels in waves. So that value will be different if this were not a true RMS meter. I use this for every job that I do. I really, really like this multimeter. Um, and as far as a non-contact voltage detector, um, you wanna get one that you really, really trust. Um, this particular one is rated for uh, 12 to 1,000 volts. So it'll pick up anything as low as 12 volts and it'll pick up anything as high as 1,000. Um, I'll put the link in the description for both of these. Uh, I also wrote an article on my website about how to use a multimeter. Again, this is a beginner course, so it's only for beginners. But uh, I wrote an article. It's on my website. I'll also put that link in the description. I hope y'all enjoyed this how to use a multimeter for beginners course and uh, stay tuned to our channel. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment um, so you don't miss out on any of our future content. We're really going to start cranking these videos out. Uh, some of our upcoming videos will be how to install receptacles, uh, how to troubleshoot receptacles, how to install light fixtures. Um, and you can comment at the bottom if you've got a video that you would like to see. We are electricians and uh, we can give you help with any electrical problem that you're having. So again, this was how to use a multimeter for beginners. Thanks and I hope y'all have a great day.